What would happen if someone pushed a button and blew up all the GPS satellites we have in space? No one would know where they're going. Airplanes would have to be grounded. Tinder would stop working. It would be a disaster. Right now, there are only a few countries that have control over all of the satellites we use. But with the right bad intentions, they could all be destroyed. These satellites are a liability. But what if we didn't need them? What if we could upgrade global positioning by abandoning satellites altogether? It's possible that in the future, we may be deactivating them on purpose. The global positioning system is currently a system of orbiting satellites, receivers, and clocks that all work together to locate you. To understand why we may not need satellites anymore, we first need to understand how clocks work. A clock is anything that can keep count of some consistent source. One of the cheapest and most widely used clocks today is a quartz crystal clock, found in many things from watches to computers. It works by counting the number of vibrations in a tuning fork shaped quartz crystal when electricity passes through it. One of the biggest problems with clocks in general, including a quartz crystal clock, is that they lose accuracy over time. If you took two identically made quartz crystal clocks that were initially synchronized, they would start to tell different times due to things like differences in temperature of the crystal or differences in manufacturing. In the span of one day, these differences tend to cause quartz crystal clocks to gain or lose about half a second. This loss of accuracy over time is called clock drift. Okay, but if most clocks people are using can't agree, how do we know exactly what time it is? This is where atomic clocks come in. They work by counting the number of times an electron jumps up and down in an atom in one second, and they have virtually zero clock drift. If you synchronize two of them together and put them next to each other, it would take over 100 million years before they were off by even a second. Because they are so stable, they are used as a standard timekeeper for the entire planet. They are also the main reason GPS works. The underlying concept is simple. We know exactly how far all the satellites are from the center of the Earth. If we find out how far you are from the satellites, we can find out how far you are from the center of the Earth, which can then be easily converted to latitude and longitude. So how do you know how far you are from the satellites? These guys. Atomic clocks. GPS satellites are essentially atomic clocks in space that are synchronized with the atomic clocks on Earth. All these satellites do is constantly send out radio waves containing information about their location and a timestamp of when the signal was sent. When your smartphone receives the information, it checks the time the signal was received. So now your phone has information about where the satellite was, the time the satellite sent the signal, and the time the phone received the signal. To find out how far you are from the satellite, your phone subtracts the time the satellite transmitted the signal from the time it received the signal and multiplies by the speed of the radio wave, which is the speed of light. This can only work though if your phone clock is perfectly in sync with GPS satellite clocks. Even if your phone's clock is out of sync by 10 millionths of a second, it can throw your calculated distance off by 3 kilometers. And because your phone doesn't have an atomic clock, it'll definitely be out of sync by some amount. The unknown time difference between your phone clock and the atomic clocks on the satellites is called clock bias and is a real issue with GPS positioning. Luckily, there's a way to get around it. For the sake of simplicity, let's pretend we were in a 2D universe. Here's a 2D Earth, not to be mistaken with a much more ridiculous and equally untrue flat Earth. In a 2D Earth, the volume of the real Earth is the area of the circle, and the surface of the real Earth is the perimeter of the circle. Let's say you're visiting Mexico and getting hungry. You pull out your phone and type in Taco Bell near me. The first thing your phone will do is try and locate where you are on the surface of the Earth. If we ignore clock bias, there would only need to be two pieces of information your phone needs to figure out. How far you are horizontally from the center of the Earth, and how far you are vertically from the center of the Earth. Because there are two unknowns, for your phone to calculate them, it needs data from two satellites. When your phone receives the location and timestamp from the first satellite, let's say it calculates that the satellite is 20,000 kilometers from you. Based on that information alone, you could be here, but you could also be here, here, or anywhere on the circle. A second satellite narrows it down. Let's say your phone calculates that you're 23,000 kilometers from the second satellite. That only leaves two possible places you could be, either here or here. And because you're not thousands of kilometers in outer space, you have to be here. 
but there's still the issue of clock bias, making it very unclear what the distances actually are. Fortunately, because all the satellite clocks are in sync with each other, the clock bias is the same for all of them. This means it just becomes another unknown. So now, with the distance measurement of a third satellite, your phone can actually calculate your X position, your Y position, and your clock bias, allowing you to know where you are on planet Earth and how far you are from fast food. That's pretty much it. Except we do live in a 3D world, so we need information from four satellites at the same time. One for each of the three dimensions, length, width, and height from the center of the Earth, and one for clock bias. That's why when the US government sends their satellites into orbit, they planned it so that at least four satellites would be visible from any point on Earth at any given time. In essence, the Global Positioning System is a collection of accurate clocks in space whose location we know of at all times which is why we may not need the satellites anymore. There are dead stars in space called pulsars that shoot out jets of energy and rotate extremely fast. From Earth, they look like an extremely consistent source of blinking light. If we can devise a way to count the number of blinks, we have a clock. And thanks to the hard work of scientists and engineers, we know exactly where they are relative to the center of the Earth. The concept has already been proven. Can we actually turn it into a system for everyone to use? I don't know, only time will tell.